Hello and welcome to this short video that explains how the newspaper industry is regulated in the UK. Ultimately, newspapers uh, and newspapers journalists, subeditors and editors are responsible for the content published by their employers. And, first and foremost, those producers have to be mindful of a range of legal issues before allowing content to be printed. Newspapers, for example, have to ensure that pages are free of material that might contravene the Obscene's Publication Act or that incite criminal behaviour. Although it has to be said that news content that touches upon these regulatory issues are rarely encountered. Also, a limited range of civil law plays a role in gatekeeping newspaper content. Individuals, for example, can take action against publications if they believe that the content that they've published is defamatory or libelous or places them in a bad light. Again though, the legal expenses incurred in suing newspapers for defamation or libel are generally very expensive and as such are, are, are restricted to the rich and famous. Therefore, we rarely see that such action takes place. More ordinarily, most major national newspapers are subject to the Independent Press Standards Organisation, or IPSO for short, a non-statutory regulatory body whose editor's code of conduct outlines ethical standards that most newspapers seek to work within. IPSO, importantly, is a self-regulatory body that newspapers voluntarily join. It's worth noting that most publishers embed Ipso's ethics code into journalists' employment contracts as a means of protecting themselves from rogue reporting methods. Ipso's code mostly protects vulnerable in individuals from untoward press activity, preventing journalists, for example, from approaching children or minors for, con for story content without adult permission, or protecting victims of sexual assault from identification in court rep reportage. In theory, IPSO also provides individuals with a low-cost complaints procedure when they believe newspapers have printed inaccurate information about them. With IPSO able to levy a £1 million fine, yes, £1 million, if a paper is judged to have broken their editor's code of conduct. But in reality, no fines have ever been levied since Ipsos creation in 2014, with most breaches resulting in printed apologies and retractions only. This, of course, leads many commentators to be highly critical of Ipso as a regulatory organisation. It's also worth noting that a number of news producers, The Guardian, The Financial Times, The Independent, have simply refused to join Ipso, arguing that the organisation's approach to news gatekeeping lacks bite and that their own editorial standards provide much better protection for the public. Livingston and Lund also agree that newspaper regulation largely affects what they call a consumer-oriented regulatory landscape a light-touch approach that promotes consumer choice and, more importantly, that maximises press freedoms. Livingston and Lunt celebrate those freedoms afforded to the media that this approach produces, but they also highlight the tendency for bodies like Ipso, consumer-oriented regulatory bodies, to favour producer interests over those of their audiences. Certainly, a quick look at Ipsos Adjudications Archive reveals that major newspapers like The Times and The Daily Mirror have been subject to a limited number of Ipso investigations, with adjudications that uphold complaints usually numbering in the single digits in any given year. So, would argue that those stats suggest that Ipso is working, that newspapers successfully self-regulate content in a way that protects the public interest, or that audience power ensures news content is kept reasonably ethical. Others, though, point to the effects of a wider political context, drawing our attention to the news industry's close relationship with political leaders, arguing that successive governments' relatively weak approach to print news regulation is symptomatic of the power that national newspapers have in determining election results. 
Curran and Seaton, for example, would argue that politicians are reluctant to legislate for stronger press controls because they fear the editorial backlash of potentially disgruntled proprietor owners. So, if you would like to find out a little bit more about the Editor's Code of Conduct and the way that Ipsos shapes press regulation in the UK, you can download a copy of, the, uh, of a Google worksheet in the video description below.